Hi, this is Steve Scrovan, and you're watching Comedy Matters. And it does. So this variety party is amazing because everyone in the world in comedy is here. I'm here with Steve Scrovan, uh, and who has a film here at the festival. Tell us a little bit about your film. It's called Fred and Vinny. I directed it and produced it. It was written by Fred Stoller, who you'd recognize uh, from every TV show from the last 20 years. The last 20 years. <laughs> exactly. He's been on them all. Uh -huh. And it's actually based on a, a true story about Fred's relationship with another comic who is uh, sort of a middle act uh, MC guy in Philadelphia. Uh, named Vinny D'Angelo, and it's the story of their, uh, what was first started as a long distance relationship, where Fred was in LA, a phone relationship, and Vinny was still in, in Philadelphia, and they had kind of this symbiotic relationship where Vinny was an agoraphobic, never left his house, and Fred would tell him some mundane story about his life in LA, and to Vinny that was a great adventure because he never left. And uh, so they had this relationship where Fred was sort of the... But what brought, what brought them together in the first place? How did they meet? They met doing stand-up. You know, uh, Fred and I... An agoraphobic who does stand-up? Exactly. And, and actually, we deal with that in the movie, is how could that be? Hey, he works from his house. Well, yes. Pulls it in. Well, Fred, Fred, in one of the scenes, is in therapy, and this therapist can't understand. You're an actor. How could you be shy? And Fred's got to explain. It's different than, you know, uh, being personally rejected. It's, 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 it's something you have control of. Right. And, and, and so we, we kind of deal with that uh, uh, seeming contradiction. Now, how did you get involved in this project? Who brought you a script? Well, uh, Fred and I have known each other for 30 years. We were doing stand-up in New York in the 80s during the, the comedy boom years. And we've always uh, wanted to do this story. It's a story that he told me about. And he originally wrote it as a short story. And after he wrote the short story, I said, we should do this as a, as a movie. And eventually we got it together to do it and found ourselves on a set, shot it at 19 days. Wow. And yeah, here we are at the Just for Laughs. Now, how long was the process from conception? I mean, I know the idea goes way back, but when you started writing, was it, was it Fred who wrote the script? Fred wrote the script yeah. and probably I would say about a year and a half. And it took us about a year to get it together. Although once we decided to get it together, it came together very quickly in a matter of months probably about four months and then of course post-production takes uh, you know took another six or seven months but uh, is it hard to raise the money uh, I paid for it you did yeah See, I love that someone who believes in a project enough to pay for it that's amazing. yeah yeah I, I, I put my money where my big yap is and uh, I'm hoping we can get a distributor so I can get some of that back yeah I hope so for your sake it's great yeah. so you're, you're originally a New York guy I'm originally from Cleveland Ohio but I, I uh, started did stand up in New York uh, during the 80s. Did you ever work the comic strip? Of course. I, that's did. the first club that passed me. Oh really? Lucian Lucian passed you? Lucian Hold, sure. I'm doing the documentary and the book for the 35th anniversary. Richie Tinkin is my partner and okay. I'm writing the book on the 35th well this June, June 1st of 76 the club opened. Yeah. And I'm doing the book on the club and the documentary with Chris Rock is the exec producer of the documentary. Oh, that's great. I mean, uh, Richie uh, passed me at the club when I first I came fresh off the uh, off the bus from Cleveland, and it was like a, a weeknight, and I was on late at night, and Richie happened to be in the club. He happened to walk in the room. He saw that uh, I had some chops and said, uh, hey, hey, there, Steve, uh, come here. <laughs> and sat me down and said, uh, okay, I think uh, you can work here, but you're going to have to start late night. And uh, he gave me the whole thing. And that was the first club in New York that passed me. So I always have a soft spot in my heart for Richie. Richie Tinkin, you hear that? He's going to see this. As soon as I get home, he's going to want to see this. <laughs> we have Steve Scrovan, and you passed him personally. Exactly. Richie and I are now Facebook friends. Oh, really? Oh, yes. that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, Richie's very into that. Yeah. Social media imprint. Yes. Yeah, so I've already interviewed Seinfeld, Larry Miller, George Wallace, Louis Black, Susie Essman, everybody, yeah. uh, Chris Rock, everybody came out of that club, so you're in good company. Yes, uh, it, it, was a, it was a great place. And you know what? Of all those clubs that were there, that it's that's one still around. It's Most the only one. Yeah, because the, the improv. Ones. Improv is gone, is Catch gone. is gone, and those are the big three. I mean, the Comedy Cellar is still there, but that was later. Yeah. And Stand Up New York is still there, but that was also later. But of those original top three, Strip is still there. What were some of your other credits? I know your name so well. What were some? Have you done other films? 
Uh, well, I did. Uh, as far as films do, uh, I did a documentary, which is not a comedy, although it had some funny stuff in it. It had to uh, about Ralph Nader called an unreasonable man. But I was a writer on Everywhere Loves Raymond for nine years. Oh, okay, yeah. That, yeah. That's that's that, that's why I could pay for these other two movies. Ray Romano is in the film. He's a good friend, as is Rory Rosegarten. Yeah. Who, I'm, who I'm sure you know, and Phil Rosenthal. Yeah. yeah, you know, and the comic strip Christmas parties were always uh, the place to be at Christmas time. And Ray, even when he was working on Raymond, uh, and, you know, Ray's such a, a mensch, he, he never forgot, you know, where he's from or forget yes. his old friends. He would always make a video, even though he couldn't be there, Every to send year. to the comic strip Christmas party. Do you remember the last one he did where he used the cast of Everybody Loves Raymond? And it looked so real, we thought it was real, until Peter Boyle goes, I really like that joke about fucking a horse. Yeah, that's then, right, that's right. And then, uh, <laughs> who was it who played his wife? She goes, which one? There were a million. Yes, yes, you know? Doris Roberts, yes. Yeah, Doris Roberts. And they said, you know, the comic strip, that piece of shit. Yes. And they mentioned Scott Blakeman and J.J. Right. J. Ramirez. They mentioned all the comics yes, that were there. Yes, Scott's great, you know, friend of mine, George Kalfa, Hiram Kasten. And then Danny Kinsella came in at the end, and, yeah. and, uh, and he tied Ray Romano's shoes. Yes, he was like, <laughs> that's he right. Was his gopher. That's right. Right. He goes, yeah, I'll take care of you, Danny. And then yeah, he went. There, he goes, uh, Danny, my shoes. <laughs> and he got down on the floor and tied his shoes. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. We, I recently saw Danny he came to the to the comic strip holiday party. Right. Every you know the we still have the annual parties. Right, right. And we show that film every year. And and they had the big uh, uh, thirty the thirty fifth anniversary, anniversary party recently. Party. That's where Danny was. That's where I saw him that's, recently. Yeah, Very yeah. Recently. That sounded like a lot of fun. Yeah. I so remember. Are you based in L.A.? Yes. I've been there for about 20 years now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember my first comic strip Christmas party, and I remember like Joe Bolster emceeing with Paul Reiser and Larry Miller uh, telling a joke and Jackie Martling yeah. and all these people who kind of household names. I mean, Eddie Murphy was there before anybody knew who he was. I yeah. saw Eddie Murphy bomb. Yeah. Can you imagine Eddie Murphy yes. ever bombing? <laughs> I mean, that lasted for like two months, and then he was, you know, shot to fame. Uh, but it was just such a great time to be a comic and uh, witness all of that stuff yeah. yeah if you remember Richie and Bob managed Eddie for 11 years of yes yeah. of course and, uh, and that's when Eddie discovered Chris at the club in 1986 right. Chris was like setting up chairs in exchange for stage time he was 19 years old yeah I remember Chris as, as yeah as a teenager he had like a fade uh, haircut and uh, you know played on this on the comic strip softball team and uh, yeah all those guys so anyway, I wish you luck. Fred and Vinny, everybody, keep your eye out for this movie, Fred and Vinny, directed by Steve Scrovan. Awesome. I